Walk in, ask questions, ask him out. Walk in, ask questions, ask him out. Ask him out. Mm. Ah! Get it together, Natalie. Stay impartial. You don't know what terrible things could be hiding behind those big, gorgeous eyes. What if he's a murderer, or a cultist, or one of the self-proclaimed war veterans from that non-existent country? Sorry I'm late. My workload is crazy right now. But you were just whispering through that door, talking about how gorgeous my eyes were, like three seconds ago. Containment breach! There are shapeshifters on the loose that look like honest, hard-working psychologists attempting to flirt with my patient, who I have absolutely no romantic feelings towards. Sorry, Connor. Looks like we're gonna have to reschedule. Guess they all got away. Can't catch all of them. So, Connor, let's talk about the root of your confidence issues. Who were the most influential people in your childhood? Tell me about the people or things you met during your very unique, confined upbringing. Patient confidentiality, it's only us. As a kid, I was transferred a lot. One time I met a guy who involuntarily jumped between alternate dimensions. He seemed nice, but conversations with him were a pain. Then there was that day I got to meet myself when I was that toaster that can only be talked about in the first person. I was a real mind f**k. When I finally met a kid my own age, he was cool, I guess. He told me that he could force any adult to take care of him, groom him, and then feed him until they died of starvation. Lucky. There was this ghost that possessed one of my corpses once. We hung out for a while until he got bored of me and possessed some cooler kid. Let's see, there was an author from Site 51 that kept bugging me about his bad novels. Then there's that one guy I'm not supposed to talk about, and a few more but I can't really remember them at the moment. Uh huh. Actually, you know what? I did have a real friend for a while. His name was Gilbert. I was probably 11 years old at the time. Site 6-3 had a huge childcare center that I got to stay in for a while. I tried to make friends, but it was an international site, so most of the kids spoke Mandarin, alternative French, the secret script, fire tongue. You know, the usual. Soon enough, my dumbass thought all the other kids would get a kick out of my regeneration powers. They didn't like it. But somebody thought it was cool. It was one of the pet octopi from the kids' aquarium. Turns out these octopi were psychic, so it didn't matter what language I spoke. I called him Gilbert. He was bullied a lot by his siblings because he couldn't change his colors. They snuck up on him and kept eating his food during feeding time. Gilbert always used to tell me that he wished he had my regeneration powers because of how useful that must be to fight against a winged menace. I don't know what he meant by that, but it made me feel pretty important. So I always made sure to keep him well fed whenever his brothers and sisters would go to sleep. He also told me that one day, he and his family would finally travel back to the ocean. Somehow. He said it was beautiful, and promised that one day I would see it too. On one occasion, I was given permission to visit Gilbert's main tank in the aquatic center. They took him and all the other octopi there for most of the week. I was pretty excited to see Gilbert's mother. Octopus don't use names, so he just referred to her as the Big Gilbert. <laughs> was the Big Gilbert as sweet as the Little Gilbert? Connor? Maybe it was psychic energy or childish fear, but I ran out of that room as fast as I could. Somehow I knew the mother didn't want me near her or her children, so I never came back. I guess Gilbert wasn't allowed to visit the child care center either. They just put stupid mermaids in the aquarium instead. It wasn't the same. Anyway, I'm sure he's fine. I always used to tell Gilbert that he should ditch his family the second he got out. Of the nine octopus that escaped Site-63 that year, eight washed up on the shores of Greece after an awkward battle with an army of crows. I have a photo up in my room that the aquatic center sent me. And Gilbert was right. The ocean is beautiful. Even with the dead giant octopus in the middle. But it makes me happier knowing that he's out there, living life, getting mad octopussy. Interesting. So, if he's still out there, does this mean he lived past the average octopus lifespan? Um, I... I don't know. Do they live long? Oh, dude! They live forever! Oh, thank God. 
This is the most I've ever shared with a therapist. You're so good at being not overbearing and unpleasant, Miss Powers. Oh, gosh, please. Call me Natalie. Well, you may continue to call me by my first name. I thought Connor was your surname. It's interchangeable. Oh, my gosh. I feel like I can tell you anything. I wish we could just keep talking after this session. I don't care what about. I just really like you to talk with. Maybe we can go on a date sometime. We can talk about whatever we want on a date, and awkward pauses are normal because we're eating. Date? Does that mean we get to hold hands? <laughs> It appears I am free from the night terror dimension. Thank you, Connor. Thank you, Natalie. The sheer amount of sexual tension from you untouched virgins shattered the boundaries of reality and now I can walk amongst the living yet again. Yes! By the way, session's next Thursday, Connor. Remember to bring your dream journal. Thank you.